The new atheism has become a laughing stock, and I mean that literally. People are literally laughing at the motherload of dumb ideas, the new atheism. If you don't know what the new atheism is, it's atheism with a severe attitude problem, a very poor grasp of human nature, and what I can only call communal narcissistic personality disorder. Atheists 30 or 40 years ago usually didn't care much about what other people believed. But when the new atheists came along after 9-11, people like Richard Dawkins and Christopher Hitchens and Sam Harris convinced a generation of young atheists that religion is about to destroy the world unless atheists put an end to it by spending every waking moment on social media typing, Sky Daddy, Sky Daddy, Sky Daddy, Sky Daddy, Sky Daddy. But the new atheism came with a powerful and testable prediction. The prediction was this. If we can just get millions of people to abandon Christianity in the West, Western society will become more rational, more scientific, more enlightened. So, to test this prediction, millions of people left Christianity. Did society become more rational, more scientific, more enlightened? No, the Western world went completely insane. And people are starting to notice. In a recent interview with on-again, off-again, richest man in the world, Elon Musk, Jordan Peterson presented his hypothesis about what happens when a predominantly Christian society starts to abandon Christian monotheism. Spoiler alert, he doesn't think that abandoning Christian monotheism is going to make society more rational, more scientific, more enlightened. Okay, so imagine this. Imagine that there's a, a unity of moral purpose yeah. that, that is conceptualized in the traditional writings as what should be put in the highest place. So it's God, and in, in the final analysis, it's ineffable. But it is a fundamental uni, unification of monotheism. Christian monotheism provides a unity of moral purpose. There's a standard of good and bad, right and wrong. There's something to aim towards. There's the sacrificial love of Jesus as an ideal. There's a transcendent reference point. The new atheists come along and say, hey, get rid of that nonsense. Okay, then what happens? Let me guess. Scientific utopia. Here's a hypothesis. When that collapses, two things arise to replace it. Okay, one is the striving for power, and the other is the untrammeled, what would you call it, the untrammeled dominion of hedonism, and especially on the sexual gratification side. When people turn away from the pursuit of God, what makes you think the pursuit of God will be replaced by the pursuit of science? That could be true for some people living in the ivoriest of ivory towers, <coughs> Oxford, but here on Planet Reality, when people turn away from the pursuit of God, the pursuit of God is replaced by the pursuit of power or pleasure. So it's like, if there's no ultimate unity that's future and community oriented, that's mm -hmm. predicated on sacrifice, you get a dissolution immediately into the next two contenders for domination. And one is, it's about me, buddy, and get the hell out of the way. And aligned with that is, not only is it about me, it's about me, uh, what would you say, subjugated to my most base whims, because why would I want power except to do exactly what the hell I want whenever I want to? Peterson put this forward as a hypothesis. If you abandon God, God will be replaced by power or by pleasure. The hypothesis of the new atheist was that if you abandon God, God will be replaced by science or reason. Look around you and tell me which hypothesis has massive confirmation and which hypothesis has massive disconfirmation. Are people striving for more careful and accurate reasoning about the world they live in? Or are they striving for more power and control over others, and more unrestrained satisfaction of their desires? And the new atheists think Christians are the ones with a delusion? And so, part of the problem with the idea of people like Dawkins so Dawkins and the atheists no, presumed so that... I've had many conversations with Dawkins over the years. You, the you have, eh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, we're going to do a podcast together, okay. which I'm very looking forward to.
Oh, I'm looking forward to that too. Imagine spending decades of your life blasting away at Christianity, only to wake up one day and finally realize that you played a crucial role in destroying your own culture and your own country. But on the bright side, if people didn't dedicate their entire lives to attacking Christianity, they might not have anything to regret when they see their civilization come crashing to the ground. But I'm, I'm very curious about this issue because his idea, and it's kind of an enlightenment idea, is that we dispensed with the idiot superstition of the past and everyone would become, you know, Baconian rationalists. And uh, that uh, seemed, uh. yeah. Unfortunately not. Why did Elon Musk laugh? We dispensed with the idiot superstition of the past and everyone would become, you know, Baconian rationalists. And uh, that uh, seemed, uh. yeah. How does Elon Musk, who doesn't really believe in Christianity, instantly recognize the ridiculousness, the idiocy, the insanity of the new atheist position? I'm not sure. I don't know if he's always had a greater understanding of human nature than the new atheists who have none, or if he just gets it now because he's seen what's happened over the past two decades. Either way, one of the core beliefs of the new atheists is now something for people to laugh at because it's embarrassingly stupid. On a side note, Peterson says that Dawkins thought that when people abandoned religion, they would become Baconian rationalists. I wouldn't consider Francis Bacon a rationalist, at least not in the philosophical sense of rationalist versus empiricist. Bacon is sometimes called the father of empiricism. He's one of the pioneers of the scientific method. I think Peterson might be using the term rationalist in a broader sense, but I'm not sure Dawkins would want people to become Baconian rationalists. Bacon, after all, is the one who said, I dare affirm in knowledge of nature that a little natural philosophy, natural philosophy is what they called science back then, I dare affirm in knowledge of nature that a little natural philosophy and the first entrance into it doth dispose the opinion to atheism. But on the other side, much natural philosophy and wading deep into it will bring about men's minds to religion. Wherefore, atheism every way seems to be combined with folly and ignorance, seeing nothing can be more justly allotted to the saying of fools than this, there is no God. That bacon is sizzling. But I'm nitpicking. We all understand what Peterson means. Dawkins thought, and possibly still thinks, that if people drop their silly superstitions, they'll become more scientifically minded. And to that, we all say, <laughs> that seems, that seems, that seems, yeah. Unfortunately not. Somebody buy that laughing man a Cybertruck. No, well, what seems to me to happen much more likely is that power and hedonism rise to take the place of what was holy, so to speak. You know, and Nietzsche warned about that when he proclaimed the death of God to begin with. He thought nihilism would also enter the realm, right? Sure. Nihilism, power, and hedonism as the, as the triumvirate of replacement gods. Nihilism, power, and hedonism. Nietzsche saw it coming. The Germans had a better understanding of the implications of rejecting God than the British did. The Germans said, we're getting rid of God and we're going to need something really, really big to replace him or we're going to be in a lot of trouble. The British said, we're getting rid of God, jolly good show, Dawkins says we'll all be fine, isn't it? But the Germans never did find the replacement that Nietzsche was looking for. So the Germans and the British are now all in the same pub. They're sharing a cocktail made of one part nihilism, two parts hedonism, and a dash of power, which keeps them too drunk to stand against the weakest invasion in history. But don't worry. I'm sure that scientific utopia the new atheists have so much blind faith in is right around the corner in Fantasyland.